good one for you today. We have former Dallas Cowboy and New York Giant Pro Bowl linebacker Jalen Smith on the show. What is he up to? What does he want to be up to? We'll dig in. Plus, joining us, the star of Animal Control. we got to get into that. And Crime Scene Kitchen, the hilarious Joel McHale and Super Seahawks fan who wants the Supersonics back. We'll dig in. Speaking of digging in, uh, it is Operation Investigation DeAndre Hopkins. What is going on? We are sick pups and dug deep, like years ago deep, into bites from coaches to sort of try to piece together where he might go. Let's do it. All right, welcome to the show. Joe McHale on Love That. He loves Russell Wilson. Curious his thoughts uh, on him in his second year with the Broncos. We'll get his thoughts on the Seahawks. Can they take the NFC West? All those questions will be answered, and we'll just have fun with him because I've got some fun video to show him a la the soup style to see his thoughts on that, and he's got lots of fun stuff going on. Um, And he has a hilarious, like, TikTok, Instagram search. He does so much fun stuff. So we'll do that. We've got Jalen Smith on the show. Can't wait to get in his head. Maybe we'll ask him a little bit about, I don't know, Coach McCarthy. Maybe we'll ask him a little bit about, uh, obviously, the the East. But if you guys have questions for Jalen Smith, hit me up at Up and Adam Show. I went to a concert yesterday, not by myself. I went to see Conan Crows, obsessed with them, have been obsessed with them. I've probably seen them more than any other band in my entire life from when I was super, super young. And it was a bit of like a time capsule moment. I hadn't seen him in about 12 years, but it was at the Troubadour, which has got to be my favorite place I've been since moving to Los Angeles. And I've been to some good concert venues and obviously beautiful things outside and hikes and so on. But Troubadour was like, oh, I like LA right now. I'm interested in this energy. So um, thank you to SiriusXM for getting me hooked up to go to that. Um... We got a lot to talk about, so I guess we should get into it, because while I was going to a concert, Hamilton was being an absolute idiot (laughs) and digging in. You know, when Hamilton gets excited about something, he just keeps digging and digging and digging, and that brings us to DeAndre Hopkins, because it's been a bit now. It's been a week since he was officially released, and I feel like the only news we've gotten lately is teams coming out and saying, we aren't interested. We like who we have. So there's a lot flying around right now. We're going to sort it out, you and me, right now and figure out who is in the race for the three-time All-Pro. It is time for Investigation DeAndre. Yeah. Well, that's a little terrifying. I don't know how serious this is. Let's start with the unlikely suspects, okay? First up, we got the Cowboys. Here's the deal. Both Jerry and Stephen Jones came out yesterday and said Dallas is unlikely to pursue DeAndre, bringing up how happy they are to have their archer, thousand-yard guy in Brandon Cooks. Okay, that's what they said. Next, Jaguars. All right. Now, you know, I didn't really see it as a likely destination, but still, Doug Peterson figured he'd have to talk about it. He confirmed it. He's probably asked about it. And he said that it is not a realistic possibility for them. So scratch off the Jags and the Cowboys on the list. Kind of. All these people lie, so it's whatever. The Bills, they've considered and been considered one of the strongest contenders to land DeAndre. It makes the most sense. They got to win the Super Bowl. And it did take Brandon Breen's um, comments to Pat McAfee. Uh, It it took me in the direction of that there's a bit of a beacon of hope, okay? Uh, Can we see that tweet again? I didn't see it. I need to see that. DeAndre's heck of a talent. It would definitely have to fit with how we would structure the salary and all that. Never rule it out. So this is Bean to McAfee. Never rule it out, but it'll probably command a decent contract. Hmm. It does kind of sort of make me feel like it's not happening because the tea leaves are just the numbers. Buffalo's really tight with their cap space situation right now. So I'm going to sort of curb them a little bit, though the door is always open. Then there's the Jets. Now, we, we love our, our current group. Um, I know we there was some stuff with Odell, but um, other than that, there's we, we love our group. Very cute, like I said. So is he, Robert Sala, so is Aaron Rodgers, so is DeAndre Hopkins. It's a very like 
cute, sexy storyline, but that's what he said about that. So they're out. How about the Lions, right? The Lions, look, if I'm investigating and I have my detective head on and I'm looking for teams that have the space, I'm going to Detroit. They have 24 million. They're going to be without Jameson Williams for a while. That, you know, they might make sense. David saying that Lions coach Dan Campbell uh, about Hopkins said, I'm not going to comment on that one, but I like our receiver room. I think we got a good mix of different types of guys. So they're most likely out, but why don't you want to comment on it? Just say that you're out if you're out, right? And then there's the Browns, okay? There were rumors swirling about him reuniting with his Texans teammate. So we've got Stefanski being asked, Andrew and his crew always looking to improve the roster, but I'll just say, I really like the room the way it is. So that says to me that, gosh, we're, we're striking out here, people. That says to me, it is probably not happening. So then you got the Cowboys, you got the Jets, you got the Bills, the Browns, the Lions, the Jags, six teams. These are strong teams that were thought to be, maybe not the Jags, but the rest of them like, let's make a move. These guys can swing and get nuke and they all seem to be out of the race. So now let's take a quick look at the squads who have been very tight lipped, very quiet when talked about adding the star wide receiver, okay? So those are the teams that sort of came out and said, we're good, we're good, we're good. And then you have teams like the Giants. Dable said, anytime there's anyone out there who can help the team, Joe Shine, Chain and, and his staff will look into it, okay? And that's intriguing. And what's intriguing is what he didn't say. There was no, I love our receiver room, like we heard from Dan Campbell or Kevin Stefanski, okay? New York would have to do some serious cap gymnastics to make this work, but, they seem to be at least entertaining it. Let's move on to the Dolphins here. I would say this is less likely, but like I discussed yesterday with one Dalvin Cook, they do have space available and Mike McDaniel did make it clear they're gonna do something with that cap room. So pairing Hopkins and Tyreek, that'd be pretty legit. That would be scary. Uh, so there's an unknown that's not totally closing the door. Then you have the Titans. So they're in desperate need of a number one target after trading A.J. Brown last year. And Vrabel was non-committal, saying that Tennessee's focus on the players they have and that, you know, he'll keep us updated. There's history that's worth considering. Remember, Vrabel and the D.C. in Houston when DeAndre was with the Texans. Uh, and when he was hired in Tennessee back in 2018, Nuke had plenty of praise for him. Quote, he's a great guy. He's not a good coach, but he's a good guy. He can relate to the, his players. The Titans are lucky to have him. He also goes on to say that his relationship with Vrabel went beyond football, that it was personal. The Titans, I think, definitely, just based on this, this is a team to watch, okay? DeAndre praising Vrabel, all of that. So I really think the Tennessee fit could happen. And for the last of these sort of unknown spooky teams, could it be a Ryan Pohl swing for the Bears? Okay, we have not heard from Pohls, we have not heard from Eberflus about DeAndre yet. But here's this to throw out there. This is what the Bears have. 32.5 million in cap space right now, by far the most in the league. They could win a bidding war against anyone. And if D-Hop is sold on Justin Fields, pairing that with DJ Moore in that receiver's room has to be attractive to them, okay? He's a mover, he's a shaker. And this sort of thing can vault the Bears into the NFC North conversation. And is it worth it to be in the NFC North conversation to pay that for him if they're not gonna go much further than that? Probably not. But I would be shocked if Ryan Poles was not crunching numbers and weighing on a abacus thing, like what might work numbers wise for them and, and what the value might be in bringing home this all pro. So those are the unknowns. You got the Giants, you got the Dolphins, you got the Bears, you got the Titans who I like a lot. And that's sort of the other tier of these guys and the guys that are out, the unknowns. And here's, I'm just gonna throw them out there because you know, I'm just gonna stick all the pasta on the wall and see what sticks here. There's the unlikely suspects that would be long shots, but that I like. First up, this is the team that was talked about all along. It's the Chiefs. It is unlikely, even though they're interested. We know that it, that it could have been likely because they tried to make this deal happen via trade with the Cardinals. They don't have the money though. They have the second least cap space right now. But what they are really crafty at with Veach, who we love on this show, is moving some decimal points. They can free up a lot of money in a hurry. You can see the impact of the Mahomes deal, but the biggest factor here is Chris Jones. We know they're working on an extension for him. 
okay? And that $28.3 million cap hit could go down dramatically if KC can make that work. Great photo from Chris Jones at the White House yesterday taking a nap. It was great. Um, Nuke, of course, obviously has said, yeah, uh, uh, sign me up. I play for Mahomes. No brainer for this to work if they can make the finances work. The other team that's a long shot that I want to put on everybody's radar is the Texans. Yes. You heard right. The Houston Chronicle is reporting that there is some mutual interest, and they say you can't go home. Maybe you can. DeAndre likes the rookie, CJ Stroud. This would be an insane turn of events, and you know, I imagine he wants to opt for a contender. I don't know what is driving DeAndre Hopkins. I have not asked him, but they look like a legitimate option. And if we're in a world, people, where Liv and the PGA Tour can come together under one umbrella and create a new business. Uh, you think DeAndre can't go back to the Texans? Of course he can. Next, the Patriots. Okay, let's dig into this. Bill Belichick at the podium is saying, I'm not going to comment on players who aren't on this team. That's his tagline, it's what he said. If he was on Real um, House Husbands of the NFL, that's what he would say to the camera in every opening credit. But on the field during in-season hard knocks, we did get some insight into Bill's true feelings, detective style. Take a look. Glad we only have to play you every four years, man. I love you, man. You too. You too. What a career you're having. You miss half the season, still going to lead the league in receiving. You know I do my job, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to get better, man. OK. There's love here. Mutual respect between the two. That might work. The question is just Bill O'Brien. Is there lingering anything between the two of them? Like nuke Bill O'Brien, are we friends? Do we get along? Do we love each other? That's kind of the only obstacle in my mind. Um, your thoughts, guys. And the last, but definitely not least, um, sort of outlier, like long shot, but I would love to see it happen. It's a place that's just adding receivers like they're being paid to do it. And it's DaCosta and those Baltimore Ravens, okay? Eric and John have yet to comment at all on DeAndre since his release. That's sort of fishy to me, right? Like, we do know Lamar Jackson asked for the team to acquire him during contract negotiations between the quarterback and the team. And John Harbaugh has made his feelings, you guys, this is good. He's made his feelings about DeAndre very clear, not just recently, but over the past decade. Let's start back in 2013. Leading up to a week three meeting with a rookie Hopkins, Harbaugh revealed that the Ravens, quote, loved him heading into that year's draft, but they missed out on him by five picks. Remember, they picked 32nd the year after winning the Super Bowl, while Houston snapped Nuke at 27. Okay, then there was 2017. Let's fast forward to John Harbaugh calling DeAndre a star, one of the very best top receivers in the league. And then in 2019, he said, quote, I don't see one hole in his game. High praise from Harbaugh to hop. So we know Lamar wants Hopkins. We know Harbaugh loves him. He has for a decade. Will Eric DaCosta take the swing and do it? Potentially. It'd be crazy if they did it. What a loaded team. What would they? What would that do to them with the AFC shuffle and the hierarchy? They're already pretty high up there. But does it put them at the top of the division? I, yeah. And then does it, what does it do for them in the, the landscape of the AFC? That would be insane if they got DeAndre. So that's a lot of evidence. That was a lot to take in. Very comprehensive. Hamilton did so much work on this. Um, and I'll say this. After looking at all of his evidence, the discovery put in by Hamilton, I got to come to the conclusion that the Chiefs, the Texans, the Pats and Ravens, these are the top dogs, I think, to land DeAndre. This is, I think he's going to one of these four teams. Uh, and I think I hit like 15 teams there. If I missed any, let me know and tweet me at Up and Adams Show. There we go. Coming up, we've got Jalen Smith. He was with the Cowboys. He was with the Giants. Where will he go next? Jalen Smith joining us. Oh, looking like, oh, there we go. We got a smile out of him. Joel McHale. Uh, the hilarious Joe McHale joining us as well. Very excited about our first guest, a Pro Bowl linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys, before moving on to Green Bay, and most recently in New York, where he helped lead the Giants to the playoffs, a situation nobody saw coming. He was super helpful, and he's not just a stud athlete. This is somebody who's going to give me some business advice, clearly, as a rising entrepreneur. Jalen Smith, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I'm so good. Listen, we have so much to talk about. We'll get to the NFL stuff, but 
you're a busy man. Like, what aren't you doing? You just announced you're opening up a restaurant, right? Called Ginya Ramen. That's in South Bend, of course, Notre Dame boy, alma mater. What inspired you to get into that space? For me, I've always been in love with uh, the Japanese culture and, and Asian foods and things of that nature. Uh, I never wanted to be remembered as just a great football player. Uh, so I've learned to understand the value of a great relationship um, at a young age. So, you know, really getting indoors and, and always just searching for more. Um, you know, Jinya is a, a, a wonderful, a wonderful ramen spot that is the number one ramen bar in the U.S. We have 55 locations currently, and we're wow. continuing to grow. So so being a part of uh, a, a startup is amazing. Uh, it's a great opportunity. It's a great experience. And, and everyone loves ramen, especially me. I'm, I'm from the state of Indiana where it gets <laughs> cold. So ramen yeah. is great when it's cold. <laughs> Jalen, what is the perfect ramen order? I walk into Virginia. What am I ordering? Ooh, I am going to get the the spicy chicken. So I'm a guy that I really like Ooh. cayenne and peppers and jalapenos and things of that nature. So I'll get the spicy chicken. Our, our Brussels sprouts are amazing for an appetizer. We have vegan tacos, gluten-free for all, for, for all of those people who, uh, you know, who are on the, the, the real health tip. Um, but yeah, we should, we should check it out. You should definitely check it out. We're, uh, we're all across the country in different states. So uh, we're, we're, we're continuing to grow. That's amazing. I mean, congratulations on all the success. Like, not, just, just to have one place is crazy, and then you're franchising these places all over the place. It's very impressive. And you're like, I'm a bad finance gal. Like, I can't, you know, I can't balance a checkbook. I don't know anything. But you, Jalen, you're like, you're taking over the, the world with financial stuff because you've got a lot of investments, a very nice portfolio. One in particular, all the philanthropy that you do, you know, MEI, the Minority Entrepreneurship Institute, which... I was reading about it this morning. It's very like Shark Tanky, right? You're trying to find young minority entrepreneurs and match them with investors that can make their dreams happen. It's amazing. Absolutely. Um, for me, it's about it's about impact investing. It's about helping close the economic and educational gap that exists in this world today. You know, there's only one percent of, of venture dollars uh, getting invested into black and brown uh, and Latinx companies. So for me, it's like how can I help close this gap? And that's kind of like my purpose beyond athletics. Um, so with MEI, we've invested in, in 13 companies thus far, um, over $1.4 million and growing. So that's that's really, like I said, it's my purpose beyond athletics. I'm just trying to grow. I'm trying to be a good steward in, the, in this great world that we live. We don't know how much time we have on, on this earth. So I'm just thankful. Um, but I'm also looking forward to... to entering my eighth season in the National Football League. Yeah. So I'm grinding, just finished a workout. I know I look nice right now, okay. but I'm gonna I'm, <laughs> I'm have to make sure I'm, uh, I'm nice and clean after this. <laughs> well, listen, let's just get right to it then because you're you're doing lots of workouts. Where Your fans are noticing, I'm sure all 32 teams are noticing these workouts you're putting up on Instagram. What, what do you want to happen? Like, where are you at in your head with your NFL career? You know, uh, the average NFL career is about three and a half years, so I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm beating odds. Um, for me, I've been yeah. through I've been through so much. Even coming into the league, had you know having a devastating career threatening injury uh, coming out of Notre Dame, my final game, um, and was able to bounce back and and to have some success in Dallas and, um, and it was a great experience last year going to the New York Giants. Uh, like you said, no one thought that we would uh, have a playoff berth and, and, and be able to have some success. So to be a part of that, you know, to, to, to join the team and have my leadership and my experience and success uh, kind of helped a lot of younger guys that were on the team. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a, a beautiful thing. And Coach Brian Dable, I mean, Coach of the Year for a reason. He's a he's a hell of a guy. So. Uh, just just thankful to be able to learn and to and to produce. That's that's really what I'm about. Um, you know, whatever team I go to next, you know, just uh, uh, allowing a guy that's going to come in is going to know um, his role is going to know um, the value that I can add from a leadership standpoint, but also from a production. Yeah. You know, I can still play this game at a high level. So I'm grateful. Well, you had a great season with the Giants. You're giving all the credit in the world to Dable. But you, I mean, you're, there's leadership and that's great, but 
you did your thing out there. You had over 100 total tackles. When you're talking about your next team, could that team be back with the Giants? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, for me, it's like, I'm not, I'm an, I'm, I'm an expert in what I'm an expert in. And I rely on my, my agent to do his job. And, and for me, I've just got to stay ready, control what I can control. And, and that's really just what I'm about. That's, that's, that's what I, I like to focus on what I can control. So the sky's the limit for sure. Yeah. Now, the, the big news of the offseason, at least at the beginning of it, before Lamar signed his deal, was Daniel Jones getting that deal done with the Giants. Tell me, you were there at practices, in games, like, it was, you know, the bullets are flying in action. What did you see from him in the locker room and on the field that makes you feel or maybe, maybe makes Giants fans feel good about him being their guy? You know, um, prior to Dable coming in, um, I got to New York my the final month of the season. And I was in the sauna with with uh with with DJ, we call him DJ, but Daniel Jones every every single morning and was just talking a lot about, you know, he would ask a lot of questions just about game, about leadership, about um you know, what does success feel like in the National Football League? You know, coming from Dallas, I've experienced, um, you know, a little bit of success prior to, you know, coming to, to New York. So we've just always been able to pick, his, you know, each other's brain. And what I've learned from him is, man, he's a worker worker. Um, he's a guy that you want in your foxhole, and he's going to go to bat for you. So that's what I love about Daniel, um, you know, as the season continued on, I saw his continued uh, growth and confidence. And when and when he has confidence, man, he can he can light it up. Um, we call we, we we nicknamed him Vanilla Vic because he got to show off his feet a lot last year. So I expect that to continue. Uh, you know, headed into headed into this season for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen, it looks like you'd be happy to be back there. I'd actually like to see you back with the Giants, but I'm sure everything will sort itself out, and you'll leave it in your in your uh, the hands of your agent, like you said. It's wild talking to you because I just remember when you were this like young rookie, and you were you know <laughs> now you're you're talking business. You're you know you're getting yourself ready. You're very level. I can tell you have a real veteran presence about you, you know. And I'm just thinking about even back to the Cowboys where you were drafted, like. What have you learned? What advice would you give some of these rookies that are coming in right now? I, advice I would give is the mark of greatness is consistency. Um, you know, you are who you hang with. You got to make sure you surround yourself with, mm. with the right individuals um, in and out of the locker room uh, just to be able to grow as a, as a man but as a human. Um, you know, this time goes by so fast. And, you know, I've beaten so many odds because coming out of college, a lot of people thought I would never, ever play the game again. So, um, you know, in, in, in seeing that and understanding that, um, it's, it's just a matter of valuing, um, you know, really not taking anything for granted. That's, that's what I'm about. Um, I'm about putting in the hard work. I'm about being a steward of the game, I'm about being a sponge. Um, and that's just some of the advice I, I would give for the young guys coming up, for sure. I love that. I mean, you were there in the locker room when Micah Parsons came in, and, you know, to the team that you were drafted. He's such a stud. He's probably the best defensive player uh, in the league right now. Return to Dallas, unlikely? You know, uh, you know they they say the whole thing, <laughs> once a cowboy, always a cowboy. I mean, I'll be living in Dallas forever. I'm, I'm here right now. Yeah. Um, but but not, nothing but love for, for those guys. Um, but like I said, I'm I'm locked in. I'm training. Uh, I'm focused. And we got 32 teams. I, I need one. I need one team to believe in me. And we're we going to go. Well, you know, you're an inspiration to all players. So I'm sure teams will believe in you. You mentioned the injury you had before you even I think that's why you have that perspective. Like you have a great you know, what, what, what was almost taken away from you, you know, in that game with the Fiesta Bowl uh, as your last game of your college career. And now it's kind of trendy, kind of controversial, though, of guys and players saying, you know, we're, we're going to make a shift here. I'm a college star and I'm going to opt to sit out of this bowl game. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I would say it's probably the Jalen Smith rule. <laughs> Now, it wasn't really okay for, for um, you know, for guys to sit out prior to my injury. 
um, you know, I was going to be a top five pick coming out of coming out of Notre Dame. And then the injury happened and I ended up getting drafted like the third pick in the second round. Um, but at, I'm all for uh, the player's choice. You know, I, I love that they have the option uh, to be able to make that decision on whether they would want to play in it or not. Um, for me, being the guy that I am, I know if I had if I could go back, I would have played again. Um, Fiesta Bowl, Notre Dame versus Ohio State. My brother played at Ohio State. It was like eight to nine projected first round picks playing in that game. You know, and and to be able to go out the right way, being a Notre Dame captain and all of that, I would have, I would have still played in the game. So, what? Um, but the fact, I yeah, can't I, believe I, I that. would have. That's that's just that's just me. It's my character. Um, that's that's just the way I go. But I, I love that they have the option. Now to this to decide what yeah. you know what what's best for them for sure. Uh, that's that, I do not think that was going to be your answer. That's incredible. It just shows <laughs> a lot about your character for these thirty two coaches that might be watching in these teams. Um, are those CEV glasses? Yes, yes. I started my own Ira line called Clear Eye View. They're sick. It's all it's all derived around a focused vision. Um, being able to see your vision clearly on what you want to accomplish, having a determined belief on what you want to accomplish. Um, understanding that there's a belief in God, you have people that believe in you and, and, and using that fuel and then earn dreams is all about how bad you want it. You know, what work are you willing to put in to accomplish that goal? That that's what a clear eye view is about. I'm wearing my blue light lenses right now, which they nice. help you. They help relax your eyes when you're looking at screens or watching television, a movie, your laptop, um, I, I have a great team. My, my co-founder, Jamal Robinson, we're doing a, a, a lot of great things. So, uh, oh, and also on our optical side, we are going to, we are in two, 248 iMart Expresses right now. Um, for anyone who in the optical space needs eyewear lenses to, um, you know, to be able to see, I believe in fashion, I believe in for, affordable, but also quality. So clear our view, mm. check us out, cvcollection.com, and call me if you need me. <laughs> uh, we will. We are, we are so passionate about it. We love it. Let's use your, let's use your lens, your clear-eyed view, to go through a couple NFL topics here and what your thoughts are on them. I talked about Dalvin Cook yesterday. He's got three years left on his deal. He's in Minnesota. Now they're coming off a 13-4 and four season, and they might part ways. Where should D uh, Dalvin Cook end up? Ooh, Dalvin Cook. Miami. Ooh, what 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 options uh, have you guys been talking about? I can go off of that. I think Miami's probably the best option. Miami or the or Minnesota? Which one? Where, where should he go? I, I like Miami. They're deep, so it would it would add depth because of the head coach knows how to utilize his players. Um, yeah. it would be great for him to go. You know, he's a Florida State guy. Um, so to, 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 to go back home, uh, you know, close mm -hmm. to home, some, some good weather. I think he'd like that. I don't, I don't think he's like, I don't, I, don't, I don't think that Midwest vibe is, is for Dalvin, um, you know, for his entire career. I'm a Midwest guy, so I, I have no problem yeah. with the cold, but, uh, I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing him in either in Minnesota or, or, or Miami. Uh, Miami's just deep yeah. in the, um, in the running back room. But he's a great player. So but he's got that. In, in he's addition. got that Shanahan. McDaniel has that Shanahan kind of vibe where he can use a lot of running backs. So I feel like that, exactly. that could work. Exactly. If they're trying to contend, or if he stays in Minnesota, you can open up a Jinya Ramen and you can get him that cayenne pepper stuff and keep him warm uh, in another season there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Jalen, what you, about what about DeAndre Hopkins? Oh, go ahead. I was gonna go, say. Go I was gonna say DeAndre Hopkins. Look, I think. Let's. I think Kansas City. Me personally, just being a football fan, if I think he could go there with. They don't have the money. I mean, to play with Patrick Mahomes in that red and yellow, I don't think he, you know, I mean, DeAndre Hopkins has a lot of money. <laughs> I think he's one. I think yeah. he wants to win. I don't think it's all about the money anymore for De for DeAndre. In my in my opinion. Um, I know Cash is yeah. king, though. So, um, but I, I would <laughs> like to see him in Kansas in, in Kansas City. Would you take less to play for a contender? 
It depends on the contender. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it depends hey, on the contender. Brett Veach, <laughs> Brett Veach, Kansas City, let's make an offer. Let's get a deal done. They're certainly a contender. We would love to see that. I'm a little worried if DeAndre goes to the Chiefs. Not worried, but like the chemistry was so on point last year. For that team, like, is adding DeAndre going to take away from what they were able to accomplish? Like, they didn't yeah. need a DeAndre, you know? I mean, with Juju, with Juju Smith, he signed with the Patriots, correct? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's a window. My little brother is there, Sky Moore. Um, and I know he's going to emerge to become a star. What do you mean, your little so, brother? Sky Moore. That's that's my that's my brother. So we we have the same uh, family office, uh, Rise Sports Advisors. They help athletes become great entrepreneurs and run their businesses. Um, so me and Sky has gotten we we've gotten close. He's a Western Michigan guy. Um, mm -hmm. So so you know some 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 Midwest Kalamazoo vibes. But uh, no, I I really I'm really fond of uh, of um, you know their their wide receiver core, but. I think DeAndre Hopkins, wherever he goes, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna be him. Um, it's it just comes down to who's gonna bite the bullet. I see a lot of teams and coaches saying that they're they're good on their their wide receiving cores and things of that nature, but we all know what what DeAndre Hopkins can do. Who's the best defensive player in football? Ooh. Um I think Michael Parkins. I think Michael Parsons will be for sure. Um, He's not I would yet. Say, what does he have to do? I would say. I would say. I mean, I, Aaron Donald is just. I know. You know, he battled some injuries, and you know, the team struggled a lot last year and everything. But Aaron Donald is. He's legit. Um, he's. He's. You know what? A, what we call a proven process. You know, and it's just something that you 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 can't go around. <laughs> so. But um, yeah, Mike and they're, my, they're Mike making him. Bro. They're making He's him like a yeah. They're making him an edge rusher pretty much the whole time this year, Micah. That'll be interesting. You know, you know the whole rumors about him being the closest thing to Lawrence Taylor. Uh, if 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 anybody can if anybody can can be in that argument or conversation, whether it's true or not, yet you know that's that says something about a guy's potential. And Micah, he's not scared yeah. of anything. He's not scared of competition. He's not scared of failure. He's not scared of um, in anything. And that's what gives him his edge, I believe, because he's going to go. Yeah. Maybe we should call Mike McCarthy and get you back, back on the Cowboys. <laughs> you trying to get me back in the NFC East. <laughs> I actually want to see you join the NFC East, but take on the Cowboys. I don't, I just, I just have a feeling. I just like when you, what were those games like going up against the Cowboys with the Giants? Ooh, um, it was monumental Thanksgiving last yeah. year. Um, I really wanted us to win. Um, but it felt like it honestly, it felt like a home game because, you know, I've been in, I, you know, drafted in Dallas and played there for five and a half years and I still live in Dallas to this day. So I'm on the opposite, I'm on the opposing team, uh, playing in AT T stadium and all the fans are like, Jalen, we miss you. Uh, clear eye view, <laughs> Mr. Clear eye view. I'm like, I'm your enemy right now. I'm trying. I'm really trying to go at your heads, you know. So, yeah. but it was a great environment. Well, you had I a good game. A lot of family Listen. that lives out here. <laughs> so you had ten tackles. You had ten tackles, and you had ten tackles in that game. I, I looked at the numbers this morning. You had a hell of a game. You didn't win, but you had a hell of a game. Man, it was it was definitely an honor going up, uh, going up against my my my, my brothers, my my old teammates for sure. Uh, last one for you, just because you played with both quarterbacks. You talked about Daniel Jones. Similarities between Dak Prescott and Daniel Jones? Like what's, the, what's the one thing that sort of strings the two of them together, if there is one? I would say, I would say, their, I would say their hunger. Their hungerness to grow. Like, neither Dak or DJ, like, are, are satisfied with what they've accomplished or with how far they've come. Like, they really want to win it all. They want to be, they want their names to really be remembered. Um, you know, it's not about finances, it's about success. You know, they, they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're pretty set when it comes to, 
um, you know, dollars they're making and things like that when, you know, from a, from a quarterback standpoint, but they want, they want, they want, they really want to leave their mark on this, on this game and on their franchises. And that's what I respect the most because they don't take, they don't, they don't uh, take shortcuts. It's really well said. Jalen, you got to come back. I know you're super busy with your, like literally your list of investments is like cryotherapy, <laughs> mental strength app, Zertu, Onyx and East, The Cycle, EOS Worldwide, but mostly I think the Minority Entrepreneur, Entrepreneurship Institute is so incredible and I'm happy to give that love or if you guys ever need anything. I know it's, you know, it's for minority groups. Women are included in that, of course, and anything that I could do to help, let me know, okay? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate y'all having me on the show and um, I'll have to come back. <laughs> You'll have to come back. We appreciate you. You think Micah Parsons might be the best. I think Bobby Wagner is still the best defensive player. He's back up in Seattle. Joel McHale will join us to break that down and talk about that as Jalen uh, finds himself a new NFL home to make an impact on Mr. McHale. Very excited about our next guest. He is the definitive Seattle Seahawks super fan. You know him from Community, Animal Control, and Crime Scene Kitchen, which just had its season two premiere last night on Fox. Please welcome the hilarious Joel McHale. Hello. Thank you, Kay. Thank you so much. Thank you, audience. <laughs> Thank you, audience. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I got to tell you. Joel, I was doing some like show prep and and I was I put into you know all the apps just your name to sort of see like what has he been up to. It is so delightful. It is so fun. Like in what you know you're on podcasts and you've got Crime Scene Kitchen. Congratulations on that. And then it's like you and Steve Harvey on Family Feud, and then it's you and you know you're drinking, you're singing like Cool in the Gang with Jimmy Fallon on Name the Team. Like, yeah. do you ever stop yourself and say like, what is my life? Uh, yeah, I'm like a disease that has no, you know, <laughs> treatment. Uh, it just, uh, I, I just say, I, my mantra is say yes to everything. And uh, my goal is to annoy people to the point where they have to watch something I'm on. Uh, yeah, you can tell that I'm an extreme extrovert. I'm a, uh, I'm like a golden retriever person. So I, I just feel slightly guilty that I'm not in studio with you, but you guys are next to the airport and would have taken me a day and a half to get there. Yeah, that wouldn't have been fun. I appreciate you coming on the show. We'll talk some Seahawks for sure, but Crime Scene well, Kitchen was I, last no, I, night. Thank you. Very thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, go ahead. I won't interrupt you. I'll let you promote the show. Go ahead. <laughs> well, that's on and that's going. But then you have Animal Control, which just got picked up for a second season. Um, you know, you've had snakes around your neck, tarantulas crawling up your face. You had yeah. to get cows out of frat houses. I mean, I hear that they say in Hollywood, Joel, that there's two people you don't want to work with, kids and animals. What were you thinking? Well, it's funny because that <laughs> spider on my face is actually a kid as well. So, uh, yeah, there's a sugar <laughs> flyer. Uh, yeah, no, that I feel like you yeah, never work with kids and animals unless the entire focus of the show is kids and animals. So uh, if we put them forward, then um, it will detract from my bad acting. <laughs> is there an animal that you refuse to work with? Is there somebody on your like your your no trade clause NFL style that you're like absolutely not? Oh, there's a number of human beings I refuse to work with. Uh, <laughs> technically, are animals. I won't name them here. No, I uh, I'm very lucky because I don't. I love that stuff uh, and my. When I call home or send pictures to my wife uh, from the set, she'll be like, wow, this really is the perfect job for you. Because uh, like that spider thing or when I was I held a bobcat, I couldn't get enough of it. I wanted to adopt them and um, bring them home and raise them as a child, as my child. Uh, so, yeah, that, <laughs> that, that, uh, that is tarantula. Literally <laughs> yeah, that, that, that the real name of that tarantula is Gretchen. And uh, she actually goes around to schools all over uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, and kids uh, kids have been working with her for years. Uh, she's very sweet. Now, would Joel, you do that, Kay? No, no. Um, I'm not afraid of spiders, but on my face, I, I just, I don't, I don't think so. I, I feel think like you know what my problem way. would be? Hmm. Go ahead. Please. No, I think it would be a great way to kick the show <laughs> off tomorrow morning. 
yeah, may, yeah, maybe, yeah. I, it's usually a shot of tequila, we'll do it. But yeah, we could definitely try a tarantula crawling across uh, across my face. I think my issue in shooting a show like that would be I'm the most impatient person. And I imagine it takes a lot of patience, honestly, to work with these animals. Oh, you mean so you would get to set and be like, just just make sure the kitties and the dogs are in the right place. Let's go, 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 yeah. go, go, go. Get, get that chinchilla out of here. He's he's screwing around. No, I didn't move him. I would say, hey, hey, Grisham or whatever your name is, like, get your shit together. Like, we've I've got we've got lunch in two hours. Like, let's go. Yeah. That's what I would be like. I'd like, to, yeah, it's fun. It would fun to see Kay Adams yelling at a spider. <laughs> get your shit together, spider. <laughs> uh, Listen, yeah. I'm not I'm Who not afraid the- of animals, Joe. Were you impatient okay, you with? Uh, were you impatient with your uh, interior design behind you? That lamp? Were you happy with? <laughs> yes, I kind of. I'm not even in my studio. Listen, I too was like, I'm not going to the airport today, <laughs> so I'm hanging out on the west side, and this is my uh, my fake studio from home. But I've got some good stuff. Listen, I got yeah, some got, girls behind me. Yeah, you got, got the. Little, you got, uh, what books are up? There? Oh, shoot. Oh, um, gee. You know, Bill, Wal- Bill Walsh, the score takes care of itself. <laughs> yeah, the uh, famous photo. A, a, a book by Brian Billick. Who knows? I got Dolly, though. You got to love Dolly. That's good. That's, that's a big, yeah. yeah. And you ever put that on, like, right as the show starts as the theme? Yeah, I put this on w- with my tarantula, and it all just really works out. It's why I got so many Emmy nominations this year. <laughs> Listen. Wait, so that is in your home. <laughs> that is the cor- a corner of your home studio. It's a it's like a an extra room between my garage and my actual house. So if I okay. showed you what was on the other side of what I'm staring at right now is boxes and all sorts of um, some a hodgepodge, if you will, a potpourri of random stuff that I won't put in my house. See, this is that's where your audience can sit on those boxes and cheer you on. Listen, Thanks. let's talk a little Seahawks. This is how I was going to talk a little Seahawks. This. I was going to. Well, listen, I was going to say, let's. You know, speaking of animals, I'm really scared of that hawk that flies around the stadium. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> now that is a transition. Is. Yeah, don't mess with us. We will. We will set a hawk free in the stadium, and he and he will land on you. If you're, you know, if you're not cheering uh, loudly enough, he will <laughs> land on you. And see, look, the guy who he landed on, not happy. Everybody so else scary. thrilled. That's good luck. <laughs> That's, okay, talk uh, to me about your Seahawks. What is it like to be a Seahawks backer in 2023? How are you feeling about the team? I love those rookies. I love them. Yeah, I mean, think about last year at this time and how – negative all of football was and they're like i don't know seahawks i mean they might win one game maybe they'll forget their uniforms i don't know i don't know how gino's gonna be do you think he knows where the stadium is it was the the sky was falling and then all of a sudden it was great and it was cinderella story and it was it it really did the the psychology of going into it with everybody saying how bad they thought it would be. And then, you know, it it was a brilliant, wonderful season making the playoffs. Gino was brilliant. Obviously, uh, DK and uh, Lockett really uh, were incredible. And now we got uh, Jackson Smith. And so I, that that weapon right there, I mean, that's you, I feel like Gina can ju- Gino can just huck the ball up in the air and go take a break. And one of those guys will get it and then you know, we got that new cornerback, Witherspoon, and he seems very mm-hmm. exciting. And I think we might have. Hey, look yeah, at that! They, they met. They met. They met on my set at draft the day before, the day they were drafted. It was very cool. I'm obsessed with them. I'm a big Seahawks backer this year. This is very exciting. Now, what happens next year? Are you going to go to some other team? <laughs> uh, well, is that I, how it I, works? I picked the Bengals. I picked the Bengals and they went to the Super Bowl out of nowhere. And I'm having that vibe about the Seahawks because the NFC West is kind of whatever. And you have Bobby Wagner back, who I am obsessed with. So He's a legend and they will build statues to him. And uh, I'm very happy he's back. We also have a new center or there's a center. I think there's a battle for center going on. And if we can, you know, it's the it's the, it's the t- traditional thing to say, which is if we can protect the the quarterback we're going to be fine and uh we're going to be just great and 
you know, and they do, as everyone else says, every single time they go, well, if everyone stays healthy, yeah, of course. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I am deeply excited. And I don't know, maybe this will bring back the Seattle Supersonics somehow. Tell me about that. You're trying to get them back? Yes, yeah, single-handedly. No, I know it's not, you know, there's no exp <laughs> there's no expansion on the horizon, but everyone in Seattle's like, come on, let's somehow, let's get blood from a stone. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it is, it is the thorn in the side of, uh, I think one of the greatest uh, sports fans uh, uh, city on the planet. Thank you, I'm Joel McHale. What's, what's your pitch, Joel McHale, for them? Uh, you have to, no one's gonna sell their team. I mean, it doesn't happen anymore because everyone realizes how valuable an um, NBA team is. No one, and they know if there's even a threat to lose, Seattle is the big boogeyman sitting right there ready to hand you like $1.5 billion. And so that's why teams, they hardly even get to a point now where they even are contemplating selling because they know that Seattle will take them. So it's a wonderful capitalist cycle that uh, we would love to participate in. See, Russell Wilson, really, your really friends, oh, I, I liked yeah. it. I liked it, but I feel like you lost the Supersonics and Russell Wilson, but you seem pretty happy about what's going on with your Seahawks, but I know you're close with him. You interviewed him on Kim Alive and sort of expressed that, you know, him bringing a Super Bowl to Seattle was a b better and greater moment for you than the birth of your children. There was obviously yeah. a little drama on his way out of Seattle. What's your relationship with Russell Wilson? I know that you know him a little bit. Uh, we uh, have texted a bit, and uh, he's a very—he's one of the nicer people around, and it's always been great to my family. And you know, the way he left uh, was—it was abrupt. And I, but you know, with that much money on the line, uh, I would—I uh, would uh, put that question to so many people. But. Uh, you know, he brought us a Super Bowl. And so I, they will make statues to him. And then he got us there the next year. So uh, he's, for he will always be a hero to me. And, uh, and, and so I think, I, you know, people can, I think people should focus. I mean, the teams that have never even, you know, they've never won, they've never gone. And so, uh, so I, you know, that, that time was magical. And uh, I think he cr helped create a culture with the team that, you know, is still around to this day. So uh, so I'm, you know, obviously I want the Seahawks to win. Uh, and last year yeah. when we beat the Broncos in the first game of the season, it was quite uh, dramatic and exciting. And I was like, well, we're good now. Uh, that's all we needed to do. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, I think that I think everyone um it's gone on this bandwagon of uh, kind of taking a dump on him, which I think is not fair. Yeah. And uh, and I think the Broncos will be perfectly good and fine. I think they've, you know, they obviously have that new coach and he's great. So uh, that's a lot of me talking. And uh, now uh, Russell and I, uh, he should take me to a steak dinner. <laughs> I just think it's fine. And I agree with you. I, I'm a defender of Russell Wilson. I think it's like cheap and low hanging fruit, but he, and what I like about him the most and I know him a little bit, it's just he knows it's coming. He knows when he does, a, you know, Mr. Unlimited or the, you know, the Subway commercial or what, Let's Ride or whatever. Like, he knows it's coming. He doesn't care. He still stays true to himself and he doesn't, it doesn't bother him. You, yeah. however, as a snarky, uh, irreverent comedian, being friends with him is very fascinating to me. I actually, I, I'd like to watch a conversation between you two. Oh, yeah. I tell way too many jokes out of complete insecurity. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, you're uh, but the I did absolute best. Give, we, go ahead. Yeah, I did give. Uh, I did get to get at the NFL awards. Uh, I, Gino couldn't be there, but I gave. You know, I accepted for him the comeback player of the year, and uh, that was a fa very exciting. And I got to bring my kid, and it was, it was great. I was just thrilled. It was, uh, yeah. And then I got to go to the Super Bowl last year. It was uh, even though ne neither of my teams were in it. Uh, you know, it was deeply <laughs> exciting. This is going to cut us off here in a minute. We appreciate you, Jill McHale. Go win a Super Bowl, baby! Enjoy the view of your boxes. Dancing and, uh, Dolly!